today we have a special guest, Colleen. She is the producer of our Time to Be Well program. And we are going to be talking about probiotics and what they do for us. Great. I'm so excited to be here. I have so many questions about probiotics. I keep seeing all of these commercials, especially yogurt commercials, and they talk about probiotics. And some of them even have it on the packaging. But what does it mean and why do I need to to eat them? Well, that's a great question, Colleen. Labels are confusing and advertising is sometimes confusing, but probiotics basically are really healthy bacteria that live in your digestive system. And they promote good health by promoting your immune system, and they also keep harmful bacteria at a low level. So they help with digestion, they boost your immune system, and they've also been shown to reduce the signs and symptoms of, of some pretty serious chronic disease. Okay, so if they, they already live in my system, why do I need to eat more of them? And how do I know which ones have them and which ones I should eat? Because like this one says billions of probiotics, this one says nothing, and this one says it has it. So how do I know? Yeah, yeah, I get that. Well, um, this one, most yogurts have about a billion. These two have a billion. This guy has about five billion. And, and it's really difficult. You have to go online to find that. But when you look at the label and it says active cultures, that's a good sign. That means it's got some active live cultures that are probiotics and they will boost up your, your microbiome. That's what we refer to it as. Um, the reason that you want to have those in your diet is because we do some things and eat some things and take some things that are harmful to that system, to that microbiome, specifically antibiotics. When you go on an antibiotic, it is nonspecific about which bacteria that it's going to wipe out. So it takes away everything. So you constantly need to rebuild that. Um, there are some other things like non-steroidal non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like Tylenol, Motrin, those things are also harmful to our gut flora. So are some uh, uh, acid reducers. So there's all kinds of things that we do that kind of hurt it, so we constantly want to rebuild it. Okay, so what about, like my kids like to eat some of those, I call them kid yogurt, yeah. you know, and the tubes mm -hmm. and the little drink things. Are those beneficial at all, or should they really, should I stick more with the... You Not need, kid yogurt. Yeah, you get you have to look at the label to make sure that they have active cultures. And sometimes some of those don't have a lot of nutrition. You know, you, you really have to look at the label and make sure you're getting a good product. Okay. So what about if you don't like yogurt or I don't want to eat it necessarily every day? Or what other mm -hmm. things can I mm -hmm. eat that would have um, probiotics in it? That's an awesome question. Um, one of my favorite things that I think is, is really awesome is something that's called kefir. This has like 10 to 20 billion, mm. and it really can rebuild. It can stick around and rebuild that, that microbiome after antibiotics or drugs or, you know, just unhealthy situation. It can really boost up your immune system. This is great in a smoothie, or you can just drink it plain. If you get the plain kind, it kind of tastes like buttermilk, but you can also get it kind of fruited up that's pretty delicious. Um, kombucha tea is another probiotic rich food, but there are also just normal foods that are really rich in probiotics. Things like sauerkraut and pickles and miso soup and uh, um, some kinds of cheeses like goat cheese and gouda cheese. So yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a lot of foods that we can eat that really can promote good bacterial flora. Okay. What about, what's a prebiotic? I've seen that. What, how is that different than a probiotic? Yeah, yeah, that's another great question. I used to think that prebiotics was what you made probiotics out <laughs> of, but that's not what they are at all. Actually, prebiotics are what the probiotics need as nourishment. They have, they're alive, they're a culture, so they have to have something to feed on. And so these prebiotic foods are really good nutrition for our mm -hmm. probiotic microbiome. And they're things like dark greens, all the berries, dark cherries, onions, garlic, tomatoes, dried beans. There's a lot of foods, but basically they're foods that are high in fiber. Those are the things that the probiotics, the healthy bacteria like to have to help build them. Unfortunately, sugar supports the unhealthy bacteria and it promotes inflammation. So it's a really good idea to try to keep the sugars low in your diet and then lots of berries and dark greens and beans and those things really promote a good healthy microbiome. 
Okay, so explain a little bit more to me about bad bacteria. I know, I know we need good bacteria, but mm -hmm, I guess there's mm -hmm. bad bacteria in our system yeah. too? Yeah, there is, Colleen. We are always going to have some some bad bacteria and everything has a job and everything has a purpose but we are always going to have a little staff a little we're always going to have some harmful bacteria on us and in us but the good bacteria that supports our immune system keeps that at bay it keeps it you know at a low level so mm -hmm. that it is not harmful to us unfortunately what the harmful bacteria likes to feed on are sugars white refined grains and some high fat kind of foods. So by reducing those things in your diet, having more fruits and vegetables, dark leafy greens, beans, that supports the healthy bacteria, and then it kind of starves the unhealthy bacteria. Okay, what about, I've also seen in the stores and the pharmacies, the supplements, mm. the probiotic supplements. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I probably don't always do the best job of eating yogurt or things with probiotics in them. Should I take one of those or what do you think about those supplements? Well, they're the pill forms. That's mm -hmm. what you're, okay. The pill forms are um, dormant and they supposedly have between one and 10 billion CFUs and they have different strains. Each strain has a different job to do. Mm -hmm. Some bacterial strains are good for digestion. Some bacterial strains can help reduce inflammation. So they're designed for different things. Personally, as a dietitian, I think eating foods that are rich in live culture mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. It's also a lot less expensive. Okay. Some of those supplements are very, very expensive to have on a daily basis. So I just think having a, a diet that is rich in probiotics makes a lot more sense and is a lot healthier for, for us. We are in the business of digesting food. We are not necessarily in the business of digesting pills. That makes sense. And speaking of things that we can eat, when we come back, we're going to go straight to the kitchen. We'll be making some miso soup. I'll show you some kefir and we'll look at some kombucha tea. So don't go anywhere. Okay, now we're in the kitchen and we are going to be cooking today some things that are really rich in probiotics. So the first thing that we're going to make is something that is called miso soup. Miso soup is traditionally a Japanese dish that's eaten for breakfast, but we have it a lot here in the United States. When you go to any kind of uh, Japanese restaurant and you have like a bento box or sushi. So this is really something that's easy to make and it's very comforting, similar to chicken noodle soup. So all we have here is just some simple vegetable broth. You could probably use chicken broth if you like. Um, sometimes they use fish broth, but I kind of like the vegetable broth. So you just heat that up and then you add this miso paste. And miso paste is simply a kind of a cultured soybean paste. You can get it at our nice little oriental store down at the river market and all you have to do is ask someone to help you. They're very nice and they will help you find what you're looking for. Um, so we're just going to simply add this miso paste to this nice little pot of broth that we have. It has a really nice, rich aroma. It's kind of, um, it's kind of mushroomy. It's really, really nice. And to that, you just kind of let that dissolve into that nice broth. This is super simple. And we're gonna add some tofu. Tofu is a nice little soybean product. This is baked tofu. I kinda like it because it has a little richer, deeper flavor and it's firm so it doesn't, it holds up well in the broth. So that gives this soup a little bit of substance. And then this is dried seaweed and you just need a tiny bit. It's pretty pungent. So you just, you just have a little sprinkling and when you eat that soup in the, in the restaurant and you have that little bit of green and you think, what is this? Is this some kind of kale? It's not, it's seaweed. So all you need, it comes dried like this and all you need is just to kind of crunch it up 
and sprinkle a little bit in there. Like I said, a little bit goes a long way. It's pretty pungent, but it does give it a really nice flavor. And uh, this seaweed is super, super rich in vitamins and minerals, so it's pretty good for you. So there's that. And then we just bring that up to a boil. And then when it's ready, we're just gonna serve it up in this bowl. And we're gonna garnish it with a little bit of green onions. And this is just a very simple little dish that you can make very easily. And um, it's really nice instead of chicken noodle soup, like when you're not feeling well, this is a really good thing to boost up your immune system and just kind of make you feel better. So this is something very simple, miso soup. You can get it at any Japanese restaurant, but you can also make it very simply for yourself. So there's that. Now the next thing that I want to show you that's really good for probiotics, and this is the big daddy of them all, this has the most colony forming units that can actually build your microbiome, is something that's called kefir. And kefir, um, it's Turkish actually, and I believe that it was made in caves. But, and they used sheep's milk or goat's milk. But we just have regular dairy cow's milk, and all you do is you take some dairy cow's milk and you get these these grains, kefir grains. And the way that you get them is you can get them from your, your friend Fred, like I did, or you can also purchase them. And as you make them, the grains will accumulate on the top. You take those off and that's what you use your starter for tomorrow. But so all you have to do is just put some of that in the milk, like that. And then you kind of give it a little stir. Stir it up a tiny bit put the lid on and you let it sit there till the morning and it's kefir in the morning. It is a cultured milk product. It kind of tastes like buttermilk to me. I personally like the way that it tastes because I sort of like savory rather than sweet, but it's also really nice. You can get um, fruit flavored kefir. This is um, a brand called Lifeway. It comes in blueberry, comes in uh, strawberry, mango, many different flavors. And it's makes a great smoothie in the morning. So that's kefir, super high in probiotics, really, really good for your belly and your gut flora. Um, there was a very interesting article in the Wall Street Journal this week, I thought it was really interesting, right in time for this program, about a study finds allergy risk um, in an infant, in starts at birth in an infant's gut, it's actually passed to the baby in the birth canal, and that is what is boost your immune system right from the very beginning. And it's, it is the beginning of how you defend yourself against allergies and many other kinds of chronic diseases. So really interesting, right in the paper this week, while we're talking about probiotics on time to be well. So the next thing that we're gonna prepare is something that's called kombucha tea. Kombucha tea has been around for a long time and it's kind of a new and cool thing. You can get it anywhere. You can get it at Price Chopper, you can get it at Hy-Vee. It kind of looks like this. It's kind of tart and it also is a little bit bubbly. And the reason that it is is because it's fermenting. So we're also going to make some and this is really simple to make and it's really good. And it also has a lot of probiotics so it's very good to boost your immune system and keep you healthy through the winter months. So all you need to do to start with is you need to have something that's called a SCOBY. This is an acronym for a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. And every time you make a new batch, you'll get a fresh little SCOBY on top. They call that the baby. And then you can take that and you can share it with a friend and then they can make their own uh, kombucha tea. So we've got our nice little baby in here. This is a, a new baby that is from a, a previous batch that I made. So we're gonna put that in the jar. Now that is a live culture. So it has to have something to eat. It has to have some food so that it can continue to ferment. So what we're gonna give it for food is I'm gonna give it a little bit of guava nectar. So this is like, you know, some simple kind of juice that we're gonna put in there. Okay, lots of kombucha recipes will call for sugar, but I personally like to use some kind of juice that has a little bit of flavor. It kind of gives it a little, little something extra. And then I just have some regular tea. This is a blueberry lemonade herb tea. So we're just gonna pour that in there. And you're gonna let this brew for at least seven days. 
And then after it brews for seven days, you can put it in individual bottles with lids, put it in your refrigerator, and then it will kind of continue to do that fermentation and that's what gives it its bubbles. Okay, so there we have our SCOBY, we have our tea, and we have the food, which is the guava nectar that is going to use to ferment that. And then we're just gonna cover it up. Now you can't put a lid on it because it has to have air. So we're just gonna cover it up and we're gonna give him a little, little bonnet, put a rubber band around him. And then I put him in my laundry room, kind of where it's cool and dark. And I just let him sit in there for about a week. And then he goes on to his second batch or a second round of fermentation fermentation in the refrigerator. You can actually drink it after its first fermentation, but the second one is what gives it its bubbles. But this is what it's like, and it's really refreshing, and it's really good for you. So those are three great little easy tricks to help you boost up your immune system throughout the cold and flu season. Probiotics have been shown to do lots of really good things for folks besides boosting their immune system and just helping with digestion. It's, they've also been shown to really reduce a lot of chronic diseases, specifically the ones that affect the GI system like Crohn's, IBS, ulcerative colitis, and whatnot. So if there's one thing that you take away from this presentation today is just how wonderfully made that the human body is and how we can kind of heal ourselves and repair ourselves and protect ourselves from a healthy diet. And probiotics are one of those things that we can add to our diet to really beef up our arsenal to stay healthy. So thank you for joining us today. I'm Kathy Berry with the Fountain of Health and I just wanna thank you for joining us and taking care of yourself through better health and better nutrition. You can find all of these recipes and many more on kcmo.gov and just search for time to be well.